It's four o'clock. We'll call the November 7, 2011 City Commission meeting to order. Madam Clerk, will you please call the roll? Mayor Angel? Here. Commissioner Crawford? Here. Commissioner Householder? Here. Commissioner Jennings? Here. Commissioner Shirley? Here. Please stand and join us for the Pledge of Allegiance in a moment of silence. First item on our agenda is the Citizens Forum. If there's anyone here from the public that wants to speak on any issue not on today's agenda, come on up to the podium. Give us your name and address. Uh, my name is Tracy Sin, and I'm 229 South 2nd, Apartment 4. Today we have a very special day for Mr. Jason Gate, the city of Saline, the manager city of Salina. Today's his birthday. Would we please have a happy birthday singing to Mr. Jason Gate, please? To start off. One, two, three, hit it. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Jason. Happy birthday to you. And many more. Thank Is that you. a first? Has that ever happened before? It never happened. No. <laughs> I don't expect it to happen again. Either. I turned his face red. That's good. Is anyone else here for the Citizens Forum? I don't know how you could top that. Yeah. Okay. We don't have awards and proclamations, so the next item is public hearings and items scheduled for a certain time. Item 5.1 review, review of a denial of the merchant police license application. Mr. Gage. Mayor and Commissioners, um, the, uh, the city reviews various license applications, and one of those is the merchant police license. And in essence, merchant police is what uh, would equate to private security in the community. Um, not armed, uh, but uh, typically hired for security type services. Could be night watch, could be special events. There's, there are lots of different aspects of that. And so we do have uh, quite a few folks that are interested in taking on those roles throughout the year. And typically what happens is, is they fill out an application, goes to the city clerk's office, we do a background check review from the police department, uh, they make a recommendation regarding uh, whether uh, an application should be uh, supported or denied. They forward that over here and, and typically if their recommendation is that uh, one is approved, the, uh, the, we process it and move on. If not, in essence, then it can be appealed to uh, me and I'll sit down and have a, a hearing or discussion really with the applicant and talk about uh, why it was denied and uh, in essence then uh, apply uh, discretion to that and determine if in <laughs> fact I agree with that or not. And if I don't, then the applicant has the, abil the ability to appeal to you as a governing body because you inherently have the full authority uh, for that uh, license. Just kind of a quick history, we've <clears throat> done about 670 or received about 670 merchant police applications since uh, 2007. 647 of those were approved, 23 were denied. This is the first one of that type that we've had actually be appealed to the City Commission. The ordinance really leaves a lot of discretion. It's not a one, two, three grading system. It's, it's very difficult. And what we try to do is, is we really look at showing leniency for uh, types of convictions, and, and that's the emphasis is on convictions, not on arrests, but on convictions. And we, showed it, we try to show leniency for minor convictions that we don't really believe have an impact on the ability of the person to perform uh, that particular task. Um, first priority, we really do like to address, though, uh, our convictions that deal with um, offenses against other people. Could be theft, could be uh, assaults and things such as that. Uh, any demonstration of dishonesty is also something that's taken into consideration. And so we, we're pretty particular about making sure that the form is filled out because we do a background check. And one of the questions is whether or not the full background is included on the application. In this particular case, there were a couple items that were not included. I think there was a dispute as to whether those should have shown up. Really, that was the uh, basis for the police department's denial. But when I really looked at it, my focus was on a different matter more so than that. And uh, what I had looked at was a 2008 battery conviction. And I looked at that for a few reasons. Um, first of all, that was a physical offense against another person. 
that w I'd already gone through the, the court process and the guilty uh, verdict was provided, so I didn't feel it was uh, proper to put in my own judgment in place of that. Though I did want to uh, hear about the situation and see if there was anything to be gained from that. Um, the other thing, too, is this again uh, being you know, what I have to do is try to look at that and decide if, you know, only about, you know, three, four years ago, if that it has is that's an indicator of whether or not a person can be able to properly be in that position. And in a merchant police position, there are times you're in some form of authority. There could be times in which they're one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. A lot of times it could be one-on, you know, one involved with the multiple uh, people in a crowd uh, as a group. But uh, there are various situations that can occur. Uh, and uh, so we look at that pretty sensitively because the whole purpose of this is, uh, of our review of this is to ensure community safety. That's really what it's about. Well, because of that being a battery, offense against another person, and being fairly recent, I felt that the uh, denial of the application uh, made sense, and uh, I upheld that denial. And as a result, uh, uh, Ms. Tolis then appealed uh, that application to you for your consideration. So you have attached in your packet the information, you have the application, you have my letter, uh, some other correspondence and requests from Ms. Tolis regarding the application uh, throughout the process. Um, <coughs> And I guess with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. I, I know that uh, Ms. Tolles has someone here to speak on her behalf, um, yes. and she may also choose to speak on her own behalf as well. Thank you. Jason, is it, <coughs> is this going to be, is this for like work with like Midwest Security or those types? Yes. Of, okay, I was curious why we had so many applications. I always think of a merchant security guard as like a door knocker downtown or different. We're, we're, yeah, a Midwest security type company is okay. the, kind of the classic example. Okay. Well, I'm just curious whether it's 670, you know, for the guy to walk around downtown and check doors. So, okay. Ms. Tolis, did you have anything to add or your representative? Then we'll open it up for questions. <coughs> Greetings. Uh, Ms. Tolis is here, of course. Uh, my name's David Graham, and I'm an attorney that Ms. Tolis has retained to assist her in this matter. Um, of course, the reason she's here tonight is to seek your approval of a merchant security license so that she can get to work. She has been promised a job by the American Security Association if she can get her merchant security license. Now, the reason I can say that is I have a letter here from Russell Snow, who is uh, management of American Security Associates Incorporated. I'm sorry, I only brought one copy. I need. Can, can I approach and? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Give you these, and you can look at these. Uh, Thank you. At your uh, convenience. And basically, that says they don't have any concerns about Miss Tolis. They're aware she has a criminal history, uh, and they support her in this effort. Um, and I'll let Shayla uh, answer any questions you have and tell you this. But she has told me that. Not only have they promised her the job, but they're ready to get her to work, possibly even tonight, if it's if it's approved tonight. Um, the other reason I can state with certainty that uh, she would be employed almost immediately, should the commission grant her a merchant security license, is her mother already works for the company, and her mother Donna Bays is here also today in the back. And um, did you want to say anything, Donna? Okay. Um, um, but she, she works for the company already. She knows the sort of things that, is, that are going to be demanded of Shayla and what kind of work it is and uh, knows that uh, uh, she'll be able to work this job well. Now the purpose, as I believe Mr. Gage has correctly identified, and, and, there's, a con and there's a statement in your packet to this effect, the purpose of the city licensing of merchant uh, licenses is for public safety. And uh, consistent with uh, the written materials he submitted to you, uh, he just now identified that his primary concern is a 2008 battery conviction. Uh, that is a crime against person, and Ms. Tolles did plead guilty. But let's put that in perspective. That conviction is three years old. It was for a simple battery or what lawyers call a common battery. Uh, no weapon was used. Uh, no bones were broken. No eye was put out. This wasn't an aggravated battery or a major uh, offense. It was a, it, 
It was not against a law enforcement authority. Um, it was a situation uh, that simply got out of hand. Now, I'm not here to re-argue the conviction because Ms. Tolles did plead guilty, but I would point out that she did not have an attorney with her uh, representing her, and in any event, the city court, this wasn't a district court matter, the city court, upon accepting her plea of guilty, simply fined her. There was no probation, there was no need for a jail sentence, there wasn't even any restitution. It was simply a matter of uh, the court believing that a fine would resolve the matter, and she's paid the fine. And, and in the past three years, her, her criminal history is now behind her. She's not on probation anywhere. She's not on bond anywhere. She doesn't have anything coming up. Uh, and also, in trying to put this conviction in perspective, not only have three years passed, but during that three years, Ms. Tolles has matured quite a bit. She, uh, uh, she's 30 years old. She's the mother of three minor children. She lives with her children and her mother uh, here in Salina. Uh, 2039 Ruskin Road. She's moved back in. She, uh, she's with her extended family and she's matured. And that's another reason why I can say with confidence that the bumps she's had with the criminal uh, justice system are behind her. You do have full discretion to grant or deny the merchant security guard license and I would ask you to use that independent judgment. I think the city manager, when he made his determination, he's here, he can, he can tell me I'm putting words in his mouth. I think he was being cautious, and, and that's good. But it's not good to be overly cautious. Let's put this conviction in perspective and look at the fact that Ms. Tolis has the opportunity for a good job in this bad economy. You stand between Ms. Tolis and her future. A job, it's a, not just a job, it's a good job, and it's the key to her future. So on behalf of Ms. Tolls, I would request you grant the, the Merchant Security Guard license. Thank you. Um, I'm sorry, Mr. Graham, how many years after the 08 conviction and paying her fine, how many years before she can have that expunged? I believe it's three years. So she could have it expunged now and this wouldn't even be an issue. Uh, Sh Shayla and I did discuss that, and I I don't remember the particulars. I think I think my attitude was though that if I remember right, either we determined it was close or it was very close to being ripe for for that. And you're correct. If that was expunged, then I do believe that would be it would be improper to use that against her in, for a license. Greg, can you answer that? If all of these were expunged, which sounds like they all could be, would there be any legal requirement for her to disclose these convictions on the application? I don't know the answer to that question. I'm sorry. Okay. I've not had that situation before. <clears throat> I don't know what happens if you go and do the background search or the, like they did the check here and something has been expunged. Does it show up as convicted? But. Uh, the chief of police is here and they do the background. Jim may know the answer to that question. <laughs> Wait, let's put you on the spot, <laughs> Chief Hill. I just wonder if anything shows up. Put him on the mic. If it's been expunged. I'm not certain on that. Uh, we do see expungements come through from time to time, but I don't know if they're uh, reflected in the KBI records after, uh, after they're expunged. My, uh, I guess my guesstimation would be uh, they probably would still still be reflected, but they certainly Have wouldn't, noted. yeah, wouldn't count, so. Okay. Chief, if I may, it, we're outside my area of practice. My recollection, however, was that the expungement statute was generally five years. Is that your recollection? No, Greg, I think, it, I think it is five years. I I'm not 100% I'm not positive. Felony. Yeah, there is a difference between a felony and, and, and misdemeanor, and I think these convictions are misdemeanor convictions. I'm I'm not certain though. <laughs> okay, I don't work on the expungements. <laughs> Anyone else have any questions? That's my understanding too. More serious charges, either 
all or almost all of which are felonies are three years or five years and mm -hmm. the misdemeanors and infractions are three years. <laughs> Anyone else have questions? No? Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Is there any public comment on this? Seeing none, I'll bring this to the Commission for action. I suppose, Mayor, one of the things that I'm, I'm thinking of right now is, um, although we heard, and I, I, I thank you all for coming in, um, <coughs> heard a heartfelt story uh, at, at which you've worked on turning things around. Uh, but in the chair at which you sit in today, I'm tasked with, or we're tasked with, overturning something that has been reviewed and denied by the police department and something that's been reviewed and denied by the city managers. And um, for me, I, I would be looking as to wisdom uh, as to why that should be overturned. Um, I think what you've been working on doing is is phenomenal, and I would hate for this to be the thing to uh, derail that. Um, but I, I don't stand in a position to see that that wisdom above and beyond our police department has been uh, brought in light today. I'd like to hear the rest of the commission before I make a motion on that, but it's uh, seemingly the way that I see it. That points that you raised, Mayor, were correct in that if it was an sponge thing and it didn't show up, then it wouldn't even be a matter before us. Um, but we assume. We don't know mm -hmm. for sure. Mm -hmm. And that brings a different light into it. Jason, what, uh, with this license, what types of jobs would this permit her to have? Well, any job that would be of a private security nature, I would think. So I suppose that could be at the mall. Um, I suppose any business could hire a private security company. I believe they have to work through a company. Uh, could hire them to utilize her or any other employees uh, for could be checking doors, it could be standing watch, I suppose. There's, there's a lot of types of security activities that are out there. Uh, you, you know, for example, at the Bicentennial Center, we use private security for certain aspects of what we do. Um, do the folks that help with armored cars have to have these types of licenses? I don't, I don't think so, no. No, okay. No. And, and I think the, the reason that we, and I don't know that all cities regulate this, I think the reason Saline always have is because of the type of contact that that person can have with the public. And many times they may be in an area that's somewhat secluded. They may have access to areas of property that not other people have access to, could be valuables. There's all kinds of issues. Sometimes it's an issue of how they interact with the public. Sometimes it's an issue of honesty and issues uh, where they, uh, you know, you don't have concerns about theft and other things. And so there's lots of different characteristic aspects to this. In this particular case, based on the background, really the issue is a battery that occurred three years ago, three or four years ago, which is the way we've always looked at these is pretty uh, recent. If it was 10 years ago, I think I'd, it'd be a much, much more difficult decision if the record was totally clean bet uh, between then and now. But uh, it's fairly recent, and we've typically uh, tried to be reasonably cautious. I wouldn't, don't want to say overly cautious, but <laughs> reasonably cautious in these. And, and we recognize it's difficult because you have someone, and this is a decision of, uh, of you know, a, a job and maybe even a career, I don't know, um, and you, you have to weigh that. And so we've always just said, though, our role in this is to ensure the protection of the public and the best information we have is what we have here. W one of the things that did jump out a little bit to me, I didn't include um, a copy of the police report. I didn't think it was really relevant that Ms. Tullis provided, but in that there was, you know, there was some dispute going on, and it sounds like it had gone on for a while, but uh, over time. But she actually initiated going to the place where the occurrence occurred and initiated con uh, contact, meaning discussion. I'm not going to say she initiated any physical. I don't know that, but actually went there, 
to, in essence, discuss the matter, and then whatever happened happened, and it escalated, and it resulted in this. That's not very good judgment to confront in that way. And I looked at that, and I thought, well, um, is that judgment better today? It could be. No one knows without a crystal ball whether it is or whether it isn't. And so what we typically fall back on is how, how long ago did that occur, and if it's fairly recent, to be cautious, we would typically deny that. <clears throat> Any other discussion? Well, I, I, I appreciate what Norm says that, you know, we're really not wanting to second guess the city manager or the police chief, but we are the human factor in this. Uh, and I can appreciate uh, the city manager bringing up um, the, the, the property. The one thing I did notice is none of these crimes are property-based, which is important. While I don't condone the DUIs or the offense of battery, I could understand missing a few reporting things, maybe. I mean, I do paperwork all the time, and I get confused. <laughs> I get refused on my tax returns. So I, I can understand that. I appreciate the city manager and the police chief's effort on this. I'd be willing to take a chance to overrule that with our vote uh, myself. It has been three years, and if there's a possibility that can be expunged, and we and she could have, I, there's probably a fee involved with that. If we find out that it's three years, I'm not saying that it is, or or maybe it's something we could table until we found that information out. But if it could have been expunged in three years, and and this wouldn't even be an issue, uh, while well, I appreciate the city manager again and the police chief's efforts to protect the citizenry. I just kind of feel like I'd be willing to take a chance with Shayla. I expect her not to fail me, of course. May I come up and say something? Sure. Don't you think? Are we really kind of, are we done with the public discussion there? Yeah, ma'am, we've heard the public comment at this point. We, we've actually closed it. I'm we've closed just, public yeah. comment at this point. Okay. Thank you. Fine. But I, I mean, I'm just, I just, I, I, maybe it's close to Christmas or something. I don't know, but I just feel like if it's possible that she could be expunged, they're misdemeanors, they're not property crimes. Like I said, I don't condone the crimes at all, but it's a job for a mother of three. Right. A girl that's trying to better her life and make a better life for her children, you know, try to judge her past or let her go on forward with her future. Yeah, it's unfortunate, but that's the job we have in this situation. Yeah. I, d I would like to address the expungement question. Uh -huh. If our role... If the information, I, I can't say whether an expungement of that would legally mean that we should not see or could not use that information. Right. If that's the case, then that's the case. That's right. what we would do. But an expungement in and of itself doesn't change something that occurred and whether that judgment would be skewed today or tomorrow. I agree. Um, so, so basically, it wasn't expunged. It's out there, and we, we took it into consideration, mm -hmm. and that's kind of how I look at that particular aspect of it. Yeah. And, and I agree, and I, and I appreciate I, I appreciate that, uh, and, and I, I want to make it clear that 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 I accept I accept what you're saying there, but I I just feel like what Barb said this is a a mother trying to better herself, and while it's not ideal, and while I'm not happy about her record, I'm willing to give her a chance. Would be my vote at this point, and obviously we'll I'll, I'll wait to hear what the other commissioners have to say as well, but. I guess the comment that I have is that it seems to me like the American security is willing to take a chance on her. Um, through my career, I've seen an awful lot of ladies in your position, an awful lot of them. Some do well and some don't do well at all. So I would hope that you would assume the responsibility if, if in fact, we move to do that. no further discussion we'll accept a motion either to approve or deny <coughs> commissioners real quick I want to make sure you understand I didn't cover really what your action would be and I conferred with legal counsel and in essence um, it's considered denied now so if there was a no action it would it, the denial would still be there so I believe the action would be to take action if you should choose to approve it is that correct that's true 
I think uh, the city clerk also had a clarification that probably worth is worth noting. If you wouldn't mind, Luann, going and ahead. on all merchant police guard per applications, there is the KBI check. Um, in essence, of how long that takes to bring back when they first apply, when they are approved on the local background check, they are um, given a 90 day conditional uh, merchant police permit. And, and that's concurrent to whatever they find on the state background check, which doesn't come up during the first local initial one. So there are times that um, that one has to be revoked because of what has come back on that. So your action will probably be pending the um, state background check that comes. So again, to be clear, the, the motion needs to be if we decide to give Shayla a chance what, what do we need to how's our motion need to read probably that you would um, that you would move to approve the merchant police license for Shayla Tolis contingent upon um, the city receiving and reviewing the state KBI, uh, KBI background check mm -hmm. we're gonna find anything on there Shayla <laughs> <I'm kidding. laughs> okay <laughs> Well, then I'd so move that, that motion. Don't let me down if we approve this. I like a good public opinion. <laughs> so what's the motion? I would, I would move that we, uh, what J basically Jason's wording, that we approve uh, her application pending the state uh, review of her record. Mm -hmm. I would second it. It's been moved and seconded that we overturn the decision of the city manager and approve the Merchant Police License Application for Shayla Tullis pending the state background check results. All in uh, favor. Mayor, I'm sorry. May I ask a point of clarification? Sure. When, uh, Luann, when you say uh, pending the that is a, a conditional. There, there is the issuance of a license that allows them, them to, to work, work during in that, that interim time period. For 90 days. Right. Okay. Which I just wanted to make sure everybody understood that it wasn't held in abeyance right, until. Right, 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 right. So she can work the 90 days and. And then if the, something comes back, she can be pulled. Okay, s the same motion still. Okay. Same motion, still second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Aye. Motion passes four to one. We're on to the consent agenda. Item 6.1, approve the minutes of October 24, 2011. Item 6.2, approve the minutes of October 31, 2011. Does anyone have questions on the consent agenda? Is there a motion to accept the consent agenda or approve the consent agenda? So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we approve the consent agenda. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion passes 5-0. Uh, we don't have any development business, so we're on to administration. Item 8.1, first reading ordinance number 11, 10,623, levying sign of business improvement district number one service fees for 2012. Mr. Gage. Uh, Mayor and Commissioners, in 1983, the City Commission uh, created the business improvement district number one, which is the BID for downtown. Uh, you'll commonly uh, hear it referred to as a Lee district as far as branding is concerned now. Um, under Kansas state law, these districts can be formed, and what it does, it allows for some form of self-governance in which the uh, entities that are a part of that can levy service fees for certain services that are enabled by state statute. Um, it's, uh, again, it, we've used this for the past uh, 23 years, and since 1987, the effort has been delegated to Slana Downtown, Inc. to, in essence, uh, organize and administer that for you. Um, the action you have in front of you is fairly typical in which we approve the uh, service fees. Uh, for them, and uh, historically, there hasn't been an increase for quite a few years. Um, and then this year, the uh, commission had suggested some time ago, I think during the budget discussions, that it doesn't make sense to get far behind with these fees. And so, as a result of that, the uh, SDI board slash BID recommended uh, adoption of the service fees with a three and a half percent increase. Um, so, a preliminary 2012 budget was presented in May, and then uh, obviously that budget would uh, be modified, and I believe that you have that, let's see if you have that in here. 
just have the ordinance in here, but the budget would in essence be modified when it's uh, formalized to include the 3.5% increase. And that's really the only change. Everything else is right in line. The methodologies are the same as they've been in the past years, so the only change you have is that increase. Um, with that, uh, staff recommends approval of ordinance number 11-10623 on first reading levying the uh, BID number one service fees for 2012. Any B questions for Mr. Gage? I wondered if, <coughs> if all the people downtown know, I'm, not, I'm assuming they do, but uh, they've been notified of the increase. Yeah, the uh, SDI does a uh, very, very good job of communicating with their clientele. So if they don't know, they either possibly haven't uh, checked their email or any written correspondence because they do send a lot of that out. Um, so <coughs> I'm very confident that the information has been sent out. Any other questions? Is there any public comment on this? <coughs> Phil Clement, 917 South Santa Fe, and I'm representing the Lee District Board of Advisors. And I would like to tell you that, yes, uh, we have been notifying members uh, the same date. The letter is addressed to you on August 9th, I believe, was the beginning of the uh, public information out to the membership. And they've been notified monthly since that date. Uh, I would like to also correct one thing on uh, the employment district on uh, employees a number of employees, 21 through 40, there is a $14 error in that uh, in those two lines from, I'm sorry, 11 through uh, 30. There should be an additional $14 in each one of those time sl er, uh, slots. There's a formulation error in the spreadsheet. So I did want you to be aware of that. Be glad to supply, supply the clerk with that correction. Thank you. Any questions for Ms. Klima? Any other public comment? Uh, Seeing none, I'll bring it to the commission for action. Mayor, may I make a quick suggestion? Absolutely. Uh, probably would be best to clarify those numbers. Uh, I wasn't quick enough to get them. I don't know if everybody else did, but probably best to note that um, as amended in whatever <coughs> precise amounts uh, Ms. Klima had suggested. It was employees 11 through how many? 30. Uh, 30. Okay. Plus 14 on each one. Mayor, I'll make a motion that we accept uh, the ordinance 11 10623 with that modification of 11 through 30 in that employment uh, section? Second. It's been moved and seconded that we adopt ordinance 11-10623 on first reading. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion passes 5-0. Item 8.2, authorize staff to commence negotiations of a contract for a private management and operations of the Bicentennial Center. Mr. Gage, do you have anything new to add on this one? <coughs> No, Mayor, I, I don't. I think the, uh, the information's been pretty well laid out, and uh, hopefully you've had a good chance to look at that. I know from last uh, time you wanted to, uh, I think we had a, a, week off, a week off in between meetings, and it hopefully gave everyone a chance, I believe it did, to go look at the information. Um, staff's recommendation is the same for the reasons established here, and quite honestly, there was a lot of discussion about the process. We found that uh, not everyone does use uh, cost performa. Uh, just want to make that clear to you, but uh, nonetheless, that uh, discussion is up to you, and the option is up to you. And we're, as I said, we're pretty confident in our decision, and feel it's a pretty strong and good recommendation for you. And, uh, but in the end, as I mentioned before, we do believe that any of the three companies can provide the service, and that's the three. So if you should choose to look at uh, a cost-based proposal, in our and staff's opinion, that would also include SMG. There's no reason that we've had to exit the ex them out of the process. What we've tried to do is stratify who we believe is, would be the most successful for you. And so with that, I guess I'd be happy to answer questions. I know we have representatives of, I'm not sure if we have from both, comp yeah, we do from both companies uh, behind the column. I can't see back there very well. And so uh, if you have any specific questions for them, I'm sure they'd be happy to answer that. Um, if you have any questions for staff, be happy to take it. And obviously, legal counsel is here if you have any questions of a legal nature. And if you think we need to and 
in Greg's uh, discretion to uh, use executive session, we can do that if we run across a legal issue. Let's start first with any questions for staff. <coughs> Anything? Just has any information been had come forward to you all since the time that I've had to look over? I think I was there last week. Has anything new come in from any, either applicant? Or? The, the only thing in the form of information had to do back with the cost performance being uh, uh, provided. I think there was part of the discussion last week. There was an assertion by one party that uh, that, that was missed in the process. It wasn't. That was intentional on our part. We felt that that led you down a road that was not a, a very easy road if it's to be done correctly. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, we were provided with uh, information uh, that there are certain processes from the other provider in which uh, many of those processes the three main companies actually compete in which a performer wasn't required so I can't tell you what percentage but uh, it works both ways I think now what I would say and I'll kind of reiterate from last time if you do that um, any of the companies can say well you don't really have to go to that much work but what I will tell you is that if you get to a cost base at that point, um, and that's a main factor, um, and obviously in the bigger picture, that's part of what we're after. But we don't want a, we don't want to hit a number um, holding hostage maintenance, improper you know low staffing at events, things like that. So you always have to be careful if you enter into that arena that you can get a low ball number that we may not see where it's coming from in the line items. Um, the other thing is, is we would have to be very, very clear on, we basically have to construct a contract. Now, a lot of others haven't done that, but the problem is, is that if you get numbers and you make a decision based on a number, you want to hold them to that number. Well, that means you don't, there's no room to negotiate out of that by saying, um, well, we're going to do this with naming rights, or we're going to do that with sponsorships, or we're going to do that with uh, staffing or staff transition or any of that stuff. Those things have to be nailed down so that if you ask for that, Everyone is on the same page, and there's no room for movement. In addition, I would tell you that uh, I would recommend if you went that way and, and that number is that important uh, that we would put in in our agreement as much discretion as we possibly could that if certain performance and or cost factors are not met, that the city could get out of the agreement in short notice. Now, on the company, I don't like that. But my job is to ensure if there's a commitment that it's meant. Or that that they that it's made and that it's uh, fulfilled, and so we would look at it from that perspective. Um, so there would be quite a quite a lot of preparation to get you to the point that we could actually send out and say, give us a cost proposal or a performa or whatever that might be. We wouldn't do that uh, in a in a lighthearted manner. Um, so that uh, that would take quite a lot longer, quite a few weeks for us to do that. It could happen. I don't know in the end if you'd see much difference in cost. I don't know in the end if, there, if, a, if a, in essence, a, an operational uh, contribution number, which is really the main thing. I mean, we want, we want more events. We want a broader diversity of events. We want to bring the community into the building more. Those are big factors. And obviously, another one is a financial factor of how much the city contributes to operations. That ties up funding to contribute to other things from the general fund. And um, if there's a difference of $50,000, I don't know that you can differentiate whether someone, either one could get that. Um, but if it's a significant difference from where we think that they can actually be after all management fees, all you know, all the aspects of money flowing through and around and back to us, um, if it's a significant difference, then there'd have, there's probably some questions as to whether it's really reasonable or not. But if you if you go that way and you accept it, you accept it, and that's what we have to live with. So anyway, we can do that if you want to, but it will take a lot more work. I guess is my main point. So I'll give it back to you and see if you have any other questions. Any other questions, just for staff? <laughs> Is that, do any of the commissioners have questions for any of the representatives from the management companies? Okay, for public comment, let's first hear from folks who weren't here at the last meeting, and then if you want to comment and you were here at the last meeting, um, we'd accept that if you have new information or, or new ideas to share with us that you didn't share the last time you were here. So we'll open it up for public comment. If you have anything to say, come on up to the podium. Um, my name is Tracy Sin. I'm at 229 South 2nd Apartment 4. Um, are we speaking about the bicentennial, Mrs. Mayor? Yes. Um, I think it's by um, giving the privatize of the bicentennial building, the city could save about a million dollars a year. 
from from my understanding by 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 doing that is that correct to i i think that's being really optimistic <laughs> <laughs> well that's what life is all about <laughs> this one we'd like to save a dollar <laughs> yeah well that that would be a really great idea and then plus it's a i've been volunteer well this have anything to do with um I've been a volunteer for um, Jane Gate, for the um, Stieford, Stieford Theaters, and I would hope that when they get this um, deal, that the scheduling is not topping on one another or competing. Um, Salina is a very diverse city, and we don't like competing when it comes to venues or businesses. It's more like working together and the one thing I've noticed, um, I've watched, I haven't been here myself um, in person, but I've been watching you all on Access TV. Um, um, the one that came to mind, um, mostly uh, I would have to say um, Global Spectrum. It's a great company, but that's not up to me. That's just my opinions, and thank you for letting me standing here to voice my opinion, Mrs. Mayor and the City Commissioner and Mr. Manager. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sin. Any other public comment? Hi, if I may, uh, I'm Steve Peters. I'm the owner and president of Venue Works. Uh, I appreciate the opportunity to say a few words to you before you cast your vote today. Um, and I want to start with another note of thanks. I appreciate your consideration. Uh, you've run uh, quite a, a rigorous process. Uh, Jason and his team, I think, set a record <laughs> for travel <laughs> to visit sites. Uh, and uh, I think you've done a great job of due diligence. And moreover, this has been a straight up competition, and I appreciate that. Uh, as Jason said, um, any of the three companies you've talked about can take you to a better financial place, bring you more programming. So I think it comes down to really making the choice that's the best fit for you and, and for your community. And if I could, I'm gonna mention three things that I think distinguish VenueWorks uh, as that company that would be the best fit for Salina. Um, and, and before I do that, on the order of financials, I would urge you, frankly, to make a decision today, make a decision sooner than later. I mean, any of us, are going to be able to bring the, your your subsidy down. Uh, ours at you know we'd probably get it down to that four hundred thousand dollar level, which is significantly below where you are now. But that's kind of where the range where it should be. That's not that's not a unique range. That's not um, a superlative range, but it should be down around that level. And the fee would be probably a base plus a variable fee. That's the way most of these are set up, and it should be based largely on performance, which ours would be. I would say that along the lines of what Jason suggested, our fee would be largely at risk. So that if there was a, a la if you're not reaching your goals, we're not getting paid. That tends to put a certain amount of incentive in us to make sure that we, we do the job. Um, so a couple of points. We are a single source company. We run, we would run the Bicentennial Center differently in that your management, uh, sponsor development, and food and beverage would all come from one source. We're not organized with sister companies, each with their own overhead um, balance sheet, P&L reports, quarterly reports to stockholders. We are a single source, so you don't have any doubling up of fees. We don't have any doubling up of effort. Um, we run the facilities that we run generally at a lower cost. And the reason we do that is being located in the Midwest and serving largely Midwest facilities, we provide an awful lot of bench strength, an awful lot of, of support on the ground working in your facility from our 24 or so corporate staff who, who supplement the staff that you're paying for in the facility. So you have fewer people, and uh, we say they stand on our shoulders so they can reach higher. That's our job, is to support them in doing all that they can do. So the savings is yours. From that, sport, from that standpoint. Finally, we're a Midwest company. Uh, we're based in Ames. I drove down here today, swam the last few miles. Um, I live in a town much like yours. Ames, Iowa is a prairie town, a railroad town, an agricultural town, a very highly educated town, as is your, your community. 
Uh, we don't need to consult a, a, a marketing analyst and walk down the hall in, in an East Coast office building to find out what's happening in the Midwest, to go to, go to coffee, go to the grocery store. We know. I mean, we're there. It's kind of built in to our DNA. Um, we're big enough to have a national presence. We're basically from Ohio to the Rockies, but we're small enough to approach every community as a separate community with a blank slate. Your problems are much like those we face in other towns, but the solutions will be different here. I started Venue Works in Ames 15 years ago today, as it turns out. So I have, I have a birthday like Jason does. Um, and, uh, we started that company to serve the unique needs, and we think they are unique needs, of mid-sized and smaller communities, primarily in the Midwest, because everybody wears multiple hats in a market like that. You can't afford to have specialists that are stacked up in separate cubicles in the office running the facility. And we've been successful. If we weren't, I'd still be in my basement instead of having the 19 markets that we have and the 40-some venues that we have. We have a mature, effective routing network through the Midwest of arenas of similar size and capacity from Cedar Rapids, Bemidji, Brookings, Dodge City. I mean, you're right really in our wheelhouse. And that will bring you more and more activity. It isn't that we're trying to match you up with a facility that has 15 or 20,000 seats, but with other markets that are similar size, similar demographic, and similar capacity to what you have. So that's us. We're privately owned. Um, we have given you, a, we'd give you a guaranteed financial success. Single source company, Midwest company, privately held. I think these are the factors that make us different. We're not reporting to shareholders. We're not looking at the next P&L statement uh, to worry about making the right decision. We make the decision not based on what's good for us that month, but what's based for the long term for our relationship with you. So I guess whatever your decision, I would say this. I would wish for you that you find the dream on which the Bicentennial was <coughs> built. Each one of these buildings, in my experience, when it was built, somebody had a dream. Somebody said, we want this building to be an enhancement to the life and the quality of life in our town. And over time, that you lose track sometimes of the dream. And now is the time. Now is the time to find that dream, bring it out, breathe new life into it, and move forward to help realize what the Bicentennial Center can be for the next 30 years. And so I want to thank you for the opportunity to let me speak to you today. And uh, I wish you luck. Whatever your decision is, have a good time, have fun, and uh, have a great future for the Bicentennial Center. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you. Thank you. Is there any other public comment? Hello, my name is Todd Glickman. I was not here at the last meeting. Um, I am with Global Spectrum and Comcast Spectacor, and I would like to say a few words if I may. Um, we are excited about the potential of being here first and foremost, um, and we commend the selection committee. And as Steve alluded to, they did a very thorough job and drove thousands of miles on taxpayer dollars, and um, that job was probably more detailed than most that we see. Not only did they go to our facilities and meet our staff, they spent time with our contract administrators, they spent time with our stakeholders, really understanding the depth and breadth of all the companies. In addition, they then invited us back out to Salina for what was a two and a half hour oral interview to really dig in to who these companies are and what we're all about. And then after that, we were honored enough to be selected. Some of the reasons that I feel like we were selected is Global Spectrum currently manages 108 facilities throughout the United States and internationally. Our company was started by Ed Snyder, who still runs the company. I heard Steve and I read in the papers about these mysterious shareholders that we must report to. I personally haven't seen them. I've been with the organization for 22 years, and I've never gone into a shareholder meeting. Our chairman is Peter Luco and he's one floor above, and that's really where the buck stops with us. Um, Comcast Spectacor does have a series of companies that we run. We have a food service company. We have a ticketing company. 
We have a naming rights and commercial rights division. And we have a management company. And we're proud of all of our companies. All of the companies have had great growth. But there are no hidden fees in our deals. If you read our RFP response, you saw what our fees are. Our fees are also at risk. A large portion of them are. It's about production. We're not embarrassed by our size and who we are. It's been great growth. It's been a great ride. We were born in January of 2000, and since then, we've grown in the majority of secondary markets. That's really where our business lies. Yeah, we can go out and fight with the big boys and go after an NFL football stadium. We've got one that we manage. We've done a Super Bowl. But then we're also in Enid, Oklahoma, with 30,000 square feet. And we're in Niagara with 20,000 square feet. We believe our growth and our size is our strength. We are a marketing and booking company nationally. And I hear Steve and what VenueWorks is about, and this isn't about bashing VenueWorks, but this is about going out nationally and representing Salina and competing for Salina. We have no other competition in the state of Kansas. So this is who we're working for right now. We have no conflict of interests at all. I've read a lot about the theater. I don't want to drudge that up. We're excited to work with the theater. We want to work with the theater. We tried to meet with the theater. We want to be a part of this community. So in closing, we'd like to be here. We feel like we are the best company for the job. And when you really look at our roster and get down to it, we really manage the majority of our facilities are in those secondary markets. And that's really who we're about. So I'll close with that. And I hope today the selection is in line with what the city staff did. And we're here for any questions. Thank you. Is anyone here from SMG? OK. Is, that, is there any public comment from anyone not with any of the management companies? Nope. Any questions from the commissioners for uh, Mr. Peters or I didn't get Todd's last name. Todd Glickman. For Mr. Glickman. Nope. Seeing none, I'll bring this matter back to the commission for action. I would entertain the motion to authorize staff to negotiate a contract for the private management and operation the Bicentennial Center to a different management operation company, I would suggest to look into VenueWorks more. Is there a second? You know, I I'll second that. It's been moved and seconded that we authorize staff to commence negotiations of a contract with VenueWorks. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Aye. Aye. Motion fails two to three. Is there another motion? Let's look at it. <laughs> Commissioner Crawford and see if she wants to make a motion. <laughs> um, yes, I will, as a matter of fact. Um, I would move that we authorize staff to commence negotiations of contract with Global Spectrum. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we authorize staff to commit, commence negotiations of a contract with Global Spectrum. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion passes 5-0. Commissioners, if I, if I may, I do want to remind, I think, you and, and the companies and the public as well that, as we stated in the report, um, all three companies can do this and so what that means is is that in essence two companies are still very much alive maybe particularly one <laughs> it's up to you but uh, the point of that being is is that we do need to have successful negotiations to get where we need to be service wise financially and so forth with global spectrum and if not we recognize that uh, we would be comfortable and, and certainly recognize that you'd be comfortable then looking at a different company if we can't get to where we need to be so i think that's good for everyone to, to remember right. yeah and i and i just want to echo what he says to both companies uh, i I've, uh, from reading the report and, and i talked at length with with jason about this the both companies I, I looked heavier at them maybe more so than SMG gave an excellent report and both companies were phenomenal I venue works maybe just seemed to be a little more my style right but I'm completely confident with, with y'all as well uh, I think we're really going to be in great hands uh, with, with y'all as well so you will be and we look forward yeah, to working we, with everybody and, and turning the no votes 
in the yes votes, and mm -hmm. we look forward to working with the theater. And I'm confident in a year from now, they're going to be thrilled with the selection. Good. We'll um, I just wanted to make one comment that um, I really, my heart really went with Venue West, and and still kind of does. But you know, we had only just three books of qualifications to go through other than just uh, you know talking to you here we have city manager deputy city manager someone from the chamber I think mm -hmm. Sylvia Rice that traveled to all of these facilities it makes sense to me that we approve what our city manager does that's I mean one. in this instance especially that's what they're paid to do so thank you Mayor, at this point in time, I request that we move into executive session for 45 minutes to discuss with legal counsel matters subject to attorney-client privilege for the reason that public discussion of those matters would waive the privilege and adversely affect the city's interest in those matters reconvening at 5.40 p.m. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we recess into executive session. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion passes 5-0. Do we anticipate any action? We do not. Support this afternoon. Uh, classical music doesn't happen just automatically. It's paid for by thousands of folks who listen to Radio Kansas. We want you to